It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino at chumbacasino.com. Choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today. To, has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Presenting the adventures of Jungle Jim. Last week, Jungle Jim started to get ready for his expedition to India to look for Peter Hawkins' long-lost son, Ronald. While he was packing, Shanghai Lil dropped in and asked to go with him. When Jim refused, Shanghai Lil was furious and left the apartment vowing she never wanted to see Jim again. Later, Peter Hawkins goes to see Bhutan, the Indian hunter who had told him about his missing son being seen in India. Bhutan tells Hawkins that he might have been mistaken about the identity of the boy. And when Hawkins leaves, after telling Bhutan that Jungle Jim is going to lead the search, the Indian telephones his henchman, Ganga Dora, that the Society of the Tiger's Claw must prevent Jungle Jim and Hawkins from leaving India alive. The thrilling adventures of Jungle Jim are pictured each Sunday in the Comic Weekly the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure. The Comic Weekly, each page printed in full colors, is distributed everywhere as an integral part of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. And now we continue our story. It is the day after Jungle Jim, Kolo, and Peter Hawkins left Shanghai on the start of their search for Ronald Hawkins. While Jim's plane is winging its way to India, let us drop into the office of Mr. Cooper of the American Consulate in Shanghai. Well, this is a surprise, Miss DeBriel. Is it? I should say so. I never expected to have the pleasure of a call from the most famous woman secret agent in the Orient. <laughs> Here, take this chair. Thanks. Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Cooper, I never expected to have to call on you. No, oh, why? I, I don't mean that quite like it sounds. Forgive me, I'm a little upset. Is that so? Well, what's the matter? Oh, it's my own fault, I guess. Excuse me, but uh, I don't yet understand. It's about Jim. Jungle Jim Bradley? Yes. What, well, for heaven's sake, what's happened to him? Tell me. Well, I don't know that anything has happened to him, except that he left Shanghai last night in a chartered plane. Oh, well. <laughs> I was afraid you'd heard he'd cracked up. It's me that's cracked up, Mr. Cooper. I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. You see, it's a simple case of love. What? Well, say, this is news. You and Jim Bradley in love with each other. Now, what? hold your horses. Don't go broadcasting any news flashes just yet. But you said that... I said it was a case of love, but I didn't say anything about Jim being in love with me. Oh. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Real. The sort of one-sided affair, huh? Yeah, with Shanghai Lil, the woman who thought she knew men carrying the torch. (laughs) And that's a laugh for you. Oh, I wouldn't say that. No, you wouldn't. You're too diplomatic. Well, Jim and I had a little quarrel yesterday. That is, I got mad and ran out on him. I see. Later, I thought he might come around to my apartment and try to make up before he left for India. But he didn't go to see you, I take it. You take it just right. He never showed up. Jim didn't tell me exactly what time he was taking off, but about midnight I went to the airport. They told me he'd gone. Yes, he took off for Mandalay about 11. Oh, you saw him take off? No, but that was the time he'd set. I was with him when he chartered the plane. In fact, I helped him get it. Oh, I see. Well, that's that. I'd hoped that you were with him when he took off and And that he'd sent a message to you. Is that it? Yeah. Silly of me, wasn't it? Well, Mr. Cooper, the first reason for my visit here has proved a flop. 
But I'm hoping the second won't be. What's the second reason? I want an assignment that will take me to India. What? Can you give me one? Anything so I can get to where Jim is. Mr. Real, I'm terribly sorry, but... I get it. Not a chance. No, I'm, I'm afraid not. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. But if you should hear of anybody wanting a female agent to go to India, money, no object, will you let me know? There's a chance for you to follow Jim. You bet I'll let you know. After landing at Hong Kong to refuel... Jungle Jim's plane continues on its journey toward Mandalay. As we pick it up now, our friends are flying over mountainous jungle country. Hawkins turns to Jim and asks, I say, Jim, where do you think we are now? Well, from the look of things down there, Peter, I shouldn't be surprised we're flying over some part of Burma. I'll go ask the pilot. Oh, pilot, are we into India yet? Yes, sir, Mr. Bradley. This India... How much further have we to go before we get to Mandalay? We'll be in Mandalay Airport in about one, two hours. Okay, pilot, thanks. Is that in about two hours, Peter? Two hours, eh? Ain't these flying machines wonderful? <laughs> I was just thinking how long it'd take Jenny. My old cab horse, you know. How long it'd take Jenny to get us there? I don't mean any disrespect to Jenny when I say this, Peter. But I don't think she'd ever make it. Well, why not, I'd like to know. <laughs> You ought to see a streak up Ludgate Hill, even with six o'clock traffic. <laughs> you don't seem to realize there aren't any paved streets down there below us for Jenny to streak up. Huh? That's all rocks and swamps and tangled jungle. It's a slow process getting from one place to another. You don't say. Well, it don't look like it from up here, does it? No, it certainly does. Well, say, what's the matter with that engine? Oh, blimey, don't tell us we ain't never going to get to Mandalay. I'll go find out what's happening. Pilot! What's the matter with that engine? I think there is leak in gasoline line. We'll have to make forced landing. Okay, but make it as near to a village or camp as you can. We'll try. Look out on your side, Peter. Right. We must watch for some sign of civilization. Boy, if we have to land in the middle of the jungle, it's practically suicide for us. I'm keeping my eyes peeled, Governor. And I'll watch on my side over here. Jim. Huh? Jim. Look, look here. Where's that smoke coming from? Lean back and let me see. But by Joe, that looks like a village down there. Pilot, see that smoke over there to the right? I see. Let's come down near that. Yes, sir, Mr. Bradley. Can do. Keep everything forced, Peter. Here's where we either land right side up or just land. Right you are, Governor. Here we go. Uh, Hold on tight. At the very moment of the airplane crash in the jungles, the Indian hunter, Bhutan, is having a conversation with a fellow countryman back in Shanghai. And so you see, Gangadoro, why I sent for you. Yes, Bhutan. The situation is indeed grave. If our society of the tiger's claw fails to stop Hawkins from finding his son... Pardon, Bhutan, but I cannot understand why you ever told him his son was alive in Burma. I did not intend to, Gangadoro. But when I saw how broken up the old beggar was... I thought it might be some comfort to him to know at least that his son was not dead. But Jungle Jim Bradley has changed all that. Yes, Jungle Jim is a man to fear. You are right, Gangadoro. As long as he is free, our society of the tiger's claw is in danger of being exposed. And our own lives hang by thread. If Jungle Jim should find out our connection with the son of Peter Hawkins... Be quiet. These walls have ears. Do you suppose I haven't thought about that ever since he was here? I have gone nearly mad thinking about it. What are we to do? I told you Jungle Jim and Hawkins have left by plane for India, and yet you sit here. Those two men must be stopped before they reach their destination. But just saying so isn't going to stop them. You think I haven't made any move to have them stopped? What have you done? I sent a message to the Tiger's Claw to trap them in the jungle. Good. Their doom is sealed. I should feel better if we were there to see that your order is carried out. We will see. Get our plane ready. You and I shall go to Burma 
and see that jungle Jim Bradley never brings Hawkins and his son together. Back in the jungles of Burma, Jungle Jim, Peter Hawkins, Kolu, and the Chinese pilot get out of their plane after their forced landing. Everybody all right? Yes. Well, I guess so, Governor. I've still got two arms and two legs. Kolu, you okay? Yes, it's one, Jim. Kolu, all right. Are you all right, pilot? Yes, sir, Mr. Bradley. Think so. Thank you very much. Well, I guess you'd better look the plane over, pilot. Mr. Hawkins and I will try to see what village that is over there. Well, do. Oh, come on. Uh, Out we get. Uh, you, you help the pilot, Colo. Come along, Peter. Blimey, that China boy pilot is a good one. Now he got us down here in the jungle without smashing us to pieces is more than I know. Well, you see, for one thing, the pilot let the tail skid take the worst of the bump. Kept our nose in the air when he set us down so the propeller wouldn't crack up. Well, you couldn't prove it by me, Governor. The ground was coming up at me too blinking fast. I hope we can get patched up enough to get us to Mandalay. Yes, Governor. And down to I. We might as well be in Shanghai. There's this here piece of the wilderness for all the nearer we are to finding my boy Ronnie. Well, it certainly looks that way, Peter. But don't be discouraged. We'll probably have more setbacks than this before we're through with our search. Oh, of course we will, Governor. I'm sorry if I see Mr. Grouse an Englishman's privilege, you know. But I'm a bit keyed up like... Being so near to the country where Ronnie was lost, see uh, him? You must remember, Peter. Upper Burma is one big-sized piece of land. It's going to be quite a job locating the section in which your son was last seen. Yes, I know. Well, here's some sort of a road, Peter. It must lead to the village over there. Yes, so it looks like. Here comes a woman. Maybe she can tell us where we are. Blimey, and it's a white girl, too. So she is. Boy, I hope she speaks English. Of course I speak English. I was born in New York City. Born in... Uh, Yes. <laughs> Say, what are you doing in this jungle country, miss? Well, I'm a medical missionary. Oh, you are? Yes. This is the district in which I work, though my headquarters base is really in Mandalay. Mandalay? Mm hmm. Governor, the chica tell us how to get there. Yes. Uh, you see, miss, we're flying to Mandalay. Uh, that is, we were flying. Yes. We had to make a forced landing. The plane is back there in the brush. Well, how did you ever escape being killed in the crash? Well, luck and a skillful pilot. I don't think the plane is badly damaged. That is, from the landing. Mm, good. But there may be serious motor trouble. The uh, pilot's checking things now. Well, you all have my sincere congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. I wonder if you'd mind telling us where we are. What's the name of that village over there? It's called Pansang. We're about 150 miles from Mandalay. That way. That Chinese pilot was right then, Governor. Yes, Peter. He said we had just about another hour or so of flying. Oh, but say, speaking of names, I think introductions are in order. <laughs> I'm Jim Bradley. Well, how do you do, Mr. Bradley? My name is Myra Trent. Oh, Miss Trent, uh, this is Peter Hawkins. That is. Hawkins? Yes. Oh, excuse me for staring, Mr. Hawkins, but this happens to be the second time someone named Hawkins has appeared mysteriously out of the jungle. Well, my name is a bit unusual around here, I suppose, Miss. Yes. But I'm here back in dear old England. England? Uh, yes, Miss. Not London by any chance? Yes, Miss London's my own. Well, isn't that odd? The other Mr. Hawkins is from London, too. The, the other Mr. Hawkins? Say, wait a minute. Where did you meet this other Hawkins? Why, right here in Pantang. He was a patient of mine. Miss Trent, this is terribly important to us. You say he was a patient of yours? Yes, poor man. He was suffering from shell shock from the World War. Shell shock? He's suffering from... Strike me blind, Governor. Do you suppose... We'll he... find out, Peter. Miss Trent, what was this man's first name? Why, his first name was Ronald. <laughs> Does this mean that at last Peter Hawkins is about to locate his son, Ronald? The adventures you have just heard dramatized will be shown in full action pictures in the Comic Weekly, the big Comic Weekly distributed with your Hearst Sunday newspaper everywhere. In the world's greatest supplement of humor and adventure, the Comic Weekly, you will find all the famous characters who live in the world of color pictures. There's a little king, bringing up father, the cats and jammer kids, Toots and Casper, Barney Google, Flash Gordon, and many, many others. See all these famous characters in your copy of next Sunday's Comic Weekly. And don't forget our date next week, same time, same station, for a continuation of the adventures of Jungle Jim. Jungle Jim.